Our top story tonight, the latest on a story we brought you earlier this week. Thanks for joining us. I'm Rich Pierce, a new system in place at a local high school to monitor where students are during the school day has some parents crying foul. Kate, about 15 minutes ago, things really started to wind down here outside the Millsop Community Center, but Right after that, some members of the Native American community locally here from Weirton just came to the rally. And we're going to pan over and just take a look at them now. And they've been engaged in a discussion with Michael Keffer. Keffer, of course, is the one who uh, organized this rally. Breaking news in Steubenville right now. You're looking at a house fire on Lincoln Avenue through the lens of our tower cam. Lincoln Avenue is closed at Railroad Avenue right now as crews work on that fire. Not a lot of details at the moment, but we will keep you updated as we learn more. Severe weather team nine coverage for you now as we take a live look outside through the lens of our tower cam and that's a little bit of a better shot than earlier. You can kind of see some of downtown Steubenville. If you look very low, uh, it's a rainy one out there tonight, isn't it? If you're expecting to see Jeopardy right now, we are live because we've had multiple tornadoes here in the Ohio Valley this evening. It all started around five o'clock. We've been on air uh, with coverage constantly of these uh, tornadic systems since then. Kate, Chief Colbertson, thank you so much. Let's go now to Tyler Madden. He is covering that Wintersville tornado and the damage therein. Tyler. We'll send things back to you. All right, Tyler, thanks so much. Tyler and Kate on scene right now. Claire O'Neill's out there too. We have more coverage coming up in just a little bit and tonight at 10 and after the Olympics on WTOV9. Let's go now back to Brian Ivey. Guns were not the only topic discussed. In fact, there are some travel changes you should know about if you're planning on flying this summer. We have that for you on our website, WTOV9.com, along with our previous reporting on the issue of guns and planes. Uh, yes, people who do not want to see the mascot phased out are expected to attend tonight's meeting. I was speaking with the organizer of last week's rally, and he said that he's got a number of questions he wants to raise to the Board of Education today. Namely, did the Board of Education have anything to do with the decision to phase out that logo? And here's a look at that logo. It's a cartoon Native American with red skin wielding a tomahawk, and that's something that some groups say is racist. The high school administration has said that is a racially insensitive logo and they are going to begin phasing it out. However, on the other side, people are saying, no, that's part of Weir High's history and they don't want to see it gone. In fact, it's been on uniforms very recently. In fact, we were told last week that the bowling team just purchased uniforms that had that logo as part of it. So we're going to get to the bottom of things here and hopefully the Board of Education, somebody or the superintendent will speak to us tonight. Starting tonight's health check since the coronavirus pandemic began, more than a million people have called poison control with COVID-19 related questions. That's according to the American Association of Poison Control Centers. The oldest bridge in West Virginia is in Elm Grove, and it's about to undergo a rehab project. Next week, Monument Place Bridge on National Road will close for an estimated year and a half. The work will not replace the historic structure, but functionally it will be like new. Governor Mike DeWine enters what could be his final year in office, having, for a time at least, been one of the major faces in the fight against COVID-19 at the state level. But a lot has changed. A Senate bill limiting his powers and a reluctance by just under half the state to get the jab. Here's part one of my sit down at the governor's mansion. Senate Bill 22 stripped you of some of your uh, power when it came to pandemic response and, and health orders. How big of a hindrance uh, was that and has that been? You know, I think at this point uh, in the pandemic, uh, I'm not aware of any state that's compelling anybody to get a, a vaccine. You've been very pro-vaccine uh, the entire time. Uh, red counties tend to have a lower vaccination rate. Of course, many of those people voted for you. Uh, why is that? And, and is there anything that can be done party-wise to encourage? I think we're seeing across the country a real divide between rural, more rural counties and more urban counties. If the date, May 29th. The place, Hancock County, the site, the Ergon facility in Newell. Flames shooting into the night sky, the second fire at the plant in as many months. I sat down with Hancock County Emergency Management Director Jeremy Ober to find out how the county is grading the response and if there is cause for greater concern. Good evening, Rich Pierce alongside Kate Davis and live in downtown Wheeling where we are excited and we are preparing just an hour away now from the Main Street Bank Fantasy and Lights Parade. A year hiatus due to the pandemic last year, but we are back this year. We are excited. People are lining up here. It's chilly. 
Kate, there aren't too many occasions where I can break out the Christmas tree tie, but my daughter made sure that I had it on today. To help us break it all down, we're joined by political analyst Mike McTague. He's from Ohio University Eastern. Mike, thanks for being with us again. My pleasure. And you and I had this discussion in, in 2016, and this feels a lot like 2016, doesn't it, does. it so far? <laughs> Kate, good evening to you. The president taking the podium about 345 this afternoon. This was all part of the Shale Insight Conference. That is a coalition that brings together oil and gas producers and workers from the tri-state area, of course, Pennsylvania, Ohio, and West Virginia. Now in his speech that lasted for about an hour, President Trump touted the possibility of a cracker plant in Dilly's Bottom. Let's take a listen. Kate, the day-long journey may be coming to its end in the next hour or two. Right now, they are lowering the bridge onto those concrete piers, and when that's done, they'll have to weld the bridge to the top of those concrete piers. What's going to happen is tonight around 7 or 8, they're going to assess where they are. They could finish tonight. They could wait to finish tomorrow morning. But as the bridge sits right now, it is safe. They could drop things and, and move on right now, and it would be just fine overnight without any issue. And I'm going to step aside and let you see what workers are doing right now. And there are workers up there, and it's hard to see because they look awfully tiny. Now, this bridge reached its peak at about 4 o'clock today, and ever since then, they have been lowering it ever so slowly. In fact, when you watch it, it's nearly imperceptible to the eye how much that bridge is actually moving. But when you compare it to where we were, a couple of hours ago, there is certainly a difference. I don't believe Weirton, West Virginia needs to cave in to the cancel culture. Yes, I believe the logo it should be removed. The logo is a cartoon image of a Native American holding a tomahawk. And while it's not officially the school symbol, it does appear on shirts, hats, and even uniforms. It was never intended for any type of racism, offensiveness, or anything like that in that meaner. This right here from my understanding was chosen because of what an Indian represents. An, an Indian represents a warrior, strength, pride, and spirit. Michael Keffer is a 1997 Weir High grad and the organizer of the rally. He's not happy with last week's announcement that the high school would begin phasing out the logo. You had told me before you're willing to potentially pull your kids out of sports, potentially switch schools over this. Is that still the case? It, it, that very well could be. Um, the case. And that's not just coming from me. Uh, there's a lot of upset parents. The cause bringing dozens to the front steps of the Millsop Community Center. I'm out here because that Indian is not bothering anybody. They want to change our history. It's not about the sign. It's not, it's just history. I don't like that. I think it's terrible what they're doing. I was a Red Rider and all my life I was a Red Rider. And I don't like somebody telling me I'm not going to be able to wear this, this logo that I'm wearing on my hat. I think it's crazy. I mean, are, are the Native Americans complaining about us? Who's complaining about us? I mean, you know, okay, so they did it down in Washington, D.C. They're going to do it in Cle up the Cleveland Indians. I never thought it would come to Weirton, West Virginia. I do hear the other side, and, and, and I invite those people to come down here, you know, for a friendly debate. Debate they did. Multiple members of Weirton's Native American community and supporters came in opposition. There should not even be a question that this image this gentleman is holding is 100% racist imagery. As we stand here, this whole crowd of whatever you have, 50, 55 people, is here in support of this. The name itself, Red Riders, stands for like the redness in our go. skin and the genocide of receiving any red this. arms or and scalps of Native Americans. I find it and so funny that so many people word. believe that it is acceptably okay to keep this image. I don't, like, if He's you believe this image is perfectly okay and you see nothing wrong with it, I do believe you need to educate us. yourself on the history of Native Americans and so understand you, why that's gentlemen. not okay. Supporters of the logo say it's not just the decision, it's how it was made. They believe the community should have played a bigger role. West Virginia 1st District Delegate Mark Zateslo agrees. I just heard him over the weekend, just from Facebook. No, no, there was no discussion, no conversation, no anything. And no sides were given for it. And I, I think that's unfortunate. Do you believe the mascot is racist? Do I? Do you believe the logo is racist? I believe that the mascot, the, the, the one that, that, he, that he held up, I could see that being offensive.
After speaking with the other side, Keffer did say he would be in favor of making alterations to the logo. You can find the original statement from Weir High's principal on WTOB9.com. We did reach out to her and the superintendent today, but have not heard back. The school's official logo is the Block W. And while the economy is booming, there are many in the area who say it's a short-term gain for long-term pain. More now in part two of this special assignment. This is a story that's not being told and it needs to be told. The cracker plant in Beaver County continues to rise and with it, environmental and health concerns for many, including Terry Baumgarner, who lives just a 15 minute drive from the Shell Cracker site. Baumgarner is a member of the Clean Air Council and the Beaver County Marcellus Awareness Community. Increased risk for asthma, cardiovascular disease, cancer, birth defects, and endocrine disruption which is thyroid and reproductive disorders. So people need to know that. She's been part of a push to spread awareness to stop the industry buildup in the Ohio River Valley. Trying to support communities that are learning to resist the invasion of this petrochemical industry. Bob Schmetzer is another advocate in the county pushing to scale back on the petrochemical industry. We still have to live here. We're here all the time and we're not going anywhere. And do we deserve to be made sick? You know, can, uh, can government issue permits to pollute and, and harm us? Beaver County Chamber of Commerce President Helen Kissick. You can't have jobs and have zero impact to the environment, uh, but you need to be able to balance the two so you get a, 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 an equation that moves you forward for your uh, county, and that's what Shell happens to be doing. Kissick has a background in the petrochemical industry, so does County Commissioner Jack Manning. They think we're either killing the earth or killing, killing them. All I can tell you is, again, we're breathing the same air, drinking the same water, have the same concerns. I have a 12-year-old granddaughter, lives right up the hill here. I, I, I certainly want uh, a healthy future for her as well. But air and water, two of the biggest concerns for activists like Baumgartner. She's worried about solids dissolving in the river and pollutants in the air. We've got the output, which is plastics, single-use plastics, many of them, not entirely. You've got that contributing to global plastic pollution and the health impacts of that. You've got the impact on climate change. And then you've got the just pure physical health impacts. Bob Garner says enforcing regulations is another issue, local municipalities versus large corporations. Then there are financials. Shell is receiving a tax avoidance worth $1.6 billion for 600 permanent jobs. When it comes down to the permanent jobs, that, that amounts to a taxpayer subsidy of $2.6 million per job. It's much more than that. First of all, that industry has an induced or indirect job market. For every one permanent job, you have to multiply that by four or five times. And that's just connected with the site. The message from activists, don't sacrifice long-term pain for short-term gain. The reason, you know, that many people want a good job is for their family. They want it for their children. But if you're building the kind of future that folds in suffering for your children, is it worth it? If you think jobs and money are more important than the environment, try holding your breath while you're counting your money. There's some people you can't reassure. Like I said, if you're, if you're ideologically opposed, then, then there's nothing that can be said by industry or government or anybody else that's going to convince people. In 2020, <clears throat> should we be investing in plastics? Absolutely not.